Um, welcome to the Dev 202 uh, session where, where we we'll, are going to show you how you can make Visual Studio uh, suit your needs. And we're proud to be the first session in the development track when, where we are actually going to show you code. <laughs> Thank you. We haven't actually done anything yet. <laughs> uh, my, my, my name is Alec Mastikas. I am a SharePoint consultant at Movention. Um, I've been SharePoint MVP for four years. I have a blog where I write about development and WCM. And with me on the stage, I have... Yeah, my name is Victor Villén. I uh, work as a SharePoint architect for Connecta in Sweden. Uh, I'm a SharePoint master and a SharePoint certified architect as well. Uh, I also blog, not that, that often as Moldek does. Uh, <laughs> and you have my, our contact info here. So, uh, today we're going to talk about... First, we start off with some general guidelines. Eric started with that in the previous session, but we're going to focus more on the Visual Studio side here, and what you do as a developer lead to prepare your team. Uh, very short about how to prepare your machines, the dev machines. Just as Eric said, Miriam said it, I think, about having your own um, development machine and what you need to prepare on, on that machine and prepare for the whole team. And then we're going to show Visual Studio and show some code. And, if you're going to cheer, you're going to cheer loud. You have to be louder than the IT Pro crew down in the other room. So make, really jealous in the last session. Yeah, make some noise. Uh, then we're going to show you some um, project templates uh, and uh, project item templates and how to customize it to fit your, fit your needs uh, using the Visual Studio extensibility stuff. And before we start, um, let's have a quick glance at some terms that we, we, we will use throughout this uh, presentation. So the first one is uh, solution, which basically po points to the SLN. So when we say solution, we mean Visual Studio solution. Next one is project. So when we say project, we actually refer to the .cs project. Uh, then we have Visual Studio extension, which we'll, we will shortly refer to as VSIX. Uh, then we have SharePoint project, which basically is a Visual Studio project co uh, created using the Visual Studio 2010 SharePoint developer tools. Next one is Spy. You, are, you will hear that a lot in the next few, few days in the development track. And that's a SharePoint project item, which is a project item in Visual Studio project created using the Visual Studio 2010 SharePoint developer tools. Finally, there's the spit. People in the first row, don't, <laughs> don't worry, we're not going to spit on you. That's, that's how we call the SharePoint project item template in short, because that's just such a long, long word. So if we call spit, it's the template for creating spies. And now I give the word over to Victor, so he's yeah. going to tell you about preparing your environment. Exactly, we start a bit softly here. Um, you have to prepare your environment, just to be the IT pros have to prepare their servers and stuff, and we, we have to take care of our development environment. And the responsible person for this is the architect or the de lead developer. depends on how big the pro product is. Uh, we have to make sure that we have source control or ALM in place. We're not going to cover the, this in this session. It's coming tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, ALM session. Uh, we need to have a solution structure. We need to have... Depending on, on your requirements, you need to d structure your solution, having different projects, perhaps different uh, solutions. Uh, you have to think about that before, because it's really inconvenient uh, changing the structure afterwards once you start deploying it into production environments. So think first. And also the project structure within the solution. Uh, we're going to take a couple of slides about that later. And finally, Naming conventions. It sounds a bit nerdy, but it's really important to have that, especially if you're working with a large team. Not necessarily like, like we did. We didn't use name conventions. Uh, I have to say that. We couldn't agree upon how to use that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but it's really important to have naming conventions. Uh, when you're working in global, you have outsourced uh, some parts, and you're, going to, you're as an architect or a uh, lead developer uh, are doing code reviews. It's much, much easier for you to do the code reviews if you use the same conventions. And that goes from the solution down to the project, to the, to the spies, to the actual naming conventions. And of course, documentation. It's really important. <laughs> Everybody knows that. So, for your environment, you need Visual Studio. That's the most important thing to have. But Visual Studio, 
uh, out of the box isn't that good. You can do it better. And uh, we have a couple of tools uh, that makes it much easier for us. Microsoft uh, introduced the extension manager in Visual Studio 2010 that allows us to download very easily new extensions to Visual Studio from the Visual Studio extension gallery. So you can download these extensions. One of those that I uh, guess most of us in here is using is CKS Dev. Hands up those using CKS Dev. Okay, take it down. <laughs> Who have never heard about CKS Dev? A couple. Okay, great. We're going to show that. Wes over here got a couple of new fans. He's the man responsible for it. So blame him. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you need other tools such as SP Expose Checker, has to be in, uh, and your own extensions that we're going to talk about here. And what's important more is that you have to have all these extensions. On all, all developers need these extensions. One developer can say, I want this extension, for instance, and he installs it on his machine. And once he checks the code in, someone else gets the latest version, and they don't have that extension, perhaps. The code might not build, or it might not build on the build servers. So it's really important as, as, as a lead developer, make sure that everyone has the same set of extensions and the same version of the extensions. So with that, I hand over to Waldeck, and let's start. Right, so uh, back in probably late 2006, early 2007, when SharePoint 2007 came out, we didn't really have any, any SharePoint developer tools. Um, and when Microsoft released Visual Studio extensions for WSS, which is short for VSE WSS, that was probably late, like June 2008. Yeah, something. So by the time, everyone had their own way to do things, like MS Build, uh, using STS Dev. At some point, we used WSP Builder, or just do everything manually from uh, building uh, D DDF, the manifest, and stuff. So uh, at, at, at the time, Visual Studio extensions for WSS have been released. Uh, they really didn't match the approach that every SharePoint developer used. And the tools weren't flexible enough, and they weren't powerful enough for us to switch from what we used to do to the new tools. And with SharePoint 2010, Microsoft did a way better job. So at the point in time when SharePoint 2010 has been released, at the same time, Microsoft re re released Visual Studio 2010 SharePoint developer tools, which are new tools that have, have, have been built especially for Visual Studio 2010 and around the extensibility um, model that it has, and especially for SharePoint 2010. And those tools are easy to use. If you have some experience with SharePoint 2007, WSP Builder, you will find some familiar ideas that you, you can use in the tools. Those tools are powerful out of the box. Uh, they have some templates there that make it easier for you just to do your work. But what's most important there, those to tools are extensible. So if, uh, if the tools don't have something that you need or so something in the tools doesn't work the way, the way you want it, you can go on and build the tools you, you, yourself. And if you look at what you can extend in the tools, uh, let's walk through the uh, uh, screenshot for, uh, starting on the left-hand side. So the Visual Studio 2010 SharePoint developer tools ship with the uh, ser server explorer, which allows you to explore the content and properties of a SharePoint 2010 site collection located on your SharePoint box. And as you can see, the content and properties are displayed in nodes. The great thing is, you can create your own nodes, and by adding um, any items to existing nodes, you can extend the st standard functionality provided with Visual Studio 2010 SharePoint developer tools. Another thing that, that you can do, if, if we go to the right-hand hand side and to the Solution Explorer, you will see there project items and projects. What you can do is to create templates for, for those guys. So if you have, for example, things like a web template, which consists of a number of features, number of elements, yes, you could create all those by hand. But wouldn't that be easier if you, if you could just create a new web temp and have the tools create everything for you and link those guys together? Um, and when you create new uh, project items or pro pro project item templates and you create new explorer nodes, what you can do is on the right-hand side, right 
uh, on the bottom there is a properties window that you can use to explore properties of those objects. So if you, for example, have a field selected in the server explorer, what you can do is that in the property window, you can explore all, all of the pro properties su such as internal name, ID, schema, which makes it very e easy for you to copy those properties into your project and not to have leave Visual Studio, go for example to PowerShell, explore the properties and then go back to your dev end. So that's one more uh, thing that, that you can extend in the tools. And finally what you have is, we all know that at some point when, when you build a code, you want to check if it works. Uh, Visual Studio 2010 SharePoint developer tools make it easy for, for us. So when, when you hit F5, those tools will build the project, create the WSP, and deploy it to uh, sh sh SharePoint instance on, on your uh, um, um, machine. What you can actually do is to alter or to con con control a process so you can, for example, uh, what you could create is a custom deployment step. So every single time you hit a five, you would have some PowerShell run, or you would make some other calls in the background uh, what would support your development process the way you do it at your uh, company. And to give you some more idea how it works, I have two demos. I'd like to show you an easy one when we create a content type with event receiver, and from there we will, we will move on to uh, somehow more complex yet uh, very helpful web te template. So I'm probably the first one going to show you code. Yeah. Awesome. So what I have here is I've created an empty project and what I've created is a content type that has an event receiver uh, linked to it. What you can do is if you want to have content type that has event receiver associated with it, what you could do is to uh, associate it by code. But what you also could do, and which is probably way easier, is to use XML and then in your content type element you would add that block of XML and that would associate an event receiver with your content type. So what I have here is out of the box content type spy, and right underneath I have an uh, event handler which is associated to that content type. So that's really easy. And if you would do this, do this by hand, what, what you would have to do is to create content type, create a code, and then add this block of XML, which you obviously know by, by heart. Uh, so what I have here is I've created a VSIX where, which, which has the content type with event re receiver spit. I have to say that uh, to do, do these VSIX files you need to have the Visual Studio SDK installed. Yes, exactly. That's uh, It's a free one. download. Yes. So what you see here are the files that are going to be provisioned every single time uh, you will create new spy of that spit. So what you see here is the event receiver for the content. They love it. Uh, <laughs> what you have here is the SP data, which basically tells Visual Studio 2010 SharePoint developer tools that this item is a spy. Uh, finally, what you have here is the element XML that contains exactly the XML that you have seen a second before, but then with some weird things that you don't, don't really understand. And what binds all those uh, files together into a template is the VS template, which is basically a bunch of instructions for uh, Visual Studio uh, to tell it how to um, add those files into your project. So with that, imagine I have built it into a VSIX, I have installed it, and if I move back to my project, what I will do is now is I will go to the project, I will click right button on it, I will click add. Increase the font a bit. I have just get some very valuable feedback <laughs> that bigger font might help you better understand what we are doing here. Thank you, Eric. So once again, what I was trying to do is I wanted to add a new content type with event receiver to my project. So let's click right button on the project click on add, click on new item, and then in a list of all available templates, you can see some of those come from CKSDAF, and here it is, content type with event receiver. 
So let's stick with the name as it says out of the box. Let's click Add. And here is the dialog. So if you have ever added a content type in Visual Studio 2010 and SharePoint Developer Tools, that's exactly the same dialog here that you will get there. So if I here choose the out of the box available item content type as a base for my content type, and I will click Finish, what I've done just now is to create a new content type based on the item. And what you can see here is that I already have the content type 2 event handler created automatically for me with the item added event. And all of that is linked automatically to my content type. So I really didn't have to do any of this by myself because I have this pit. So another thing that I wanted to show you is the, the web tab, which is way more complex. And I won't go into much detail about what it is and what, what the, uh, the elements are. We'll discuss that uh, probably tomorrow in the first session in the morning in Dev 206. But as for now, assume that that's the very minimal thing that you have to have. So I have here three features. I have here the welcome page. And I have two elements. One of which is the web temp itself, and the, one, the, the other one contains version information for that uh, web, web temp. Next to provisioning those elements, what I have here is that those elements here are linked to those features here. So this one, for example, is responsible for installing the web temp. Another one is responsible for deploying the version information of the web temp to the site that I will uh, uh, create. Finally, what I, what I have is a web scoped feature that is responsible for provisioning the welcome page. So every single time you create a web temp, you have to create all of those elements by yourself by hand, and then you have to create the features and map the right elements to those guys. So that's a lot of work. Wouldn't it be easier if we had Visual Studio to do the base for us and then to focus on the real job which might be adding fun uh, functionality, branding, and stuff like that. So what I have here is I've created another spy, another spit, which is really a lot of code. And all those files will eventually make up what we have seen uh, there. So I have here all the things like the uh, feature spies. And here, what I have is a, uh, is a wizard that will pop up. So for the uh, column type out of the box, there is uh, the wizard that I reused. For this one here, there is no, no wizard available out of the box that allows me to, for example, provide display name for the web temp and to choose the base site definition that, that I want to use. So that's exactly what, what I've created here. And here beneath it, there is the commands project, which allows me to communicate with uh, SharePoint, uh, VSIX, work in 32-bit Visual Studio. And as we all know, SharePoint 2010 is 64-bit. So in order to communicate from within VSIX with the SharePoint API, you have to have separate assembly that the tools will use to communicate back and forth. So with, with that, imagine I have built all of that into a VSIX, and I have installed it. What I can do now, let me just close all of those Windows to make it easier for you to fo follow what, what I'm doing. Let me just collapse those guys. And here, if I click right button on the project, I will click Add. I will click New Item. If I scroll down on the list of available templates that I have installed, you will see here Web Template I ISC. Let's stick with the out of the box name, which is Web Template 2. I'll click Add. And what you see here is exactly the wizard that I uh, add about. So here I can provide my display name, which will be my ISC template. And as a base site definition, let's call, let's choose a publishing site, which is the one here. And if I click OK, you will probably see uh, three features, one page module added, and two empty elements. It's going to happen really fast, so <laughs> three, two, one, go. As I said, it's all there. And I haven't done anything here by hand. So Visual Studio 2010 created automatically 
uh, the web template 2 feature which is responsible for uh, installing the web template in my uh, uh, SharePoint uh, farm. Then we have the step again, then we have the welcome page. We have the welcome page 2 which is now based uh, on the publishing page because it's a publishing site. Uh, so I have that one here as well. And then I have web template 2 folder with in there a web template 2 empty element which is the web template itself and then the stamp. And the best part is Visual Studio 2010 automatically linked all those guys uh, into each other so it works. Well, applause on that. Isn't that cool? So that I'm going to hand over to Victor, yeah. and he's going to tell you more about structuring your pro projects. Yeah. And what's really cool about this, if you had chosen team site, we'll have a team site welcome page instead. And so this really adapts to what kind of pay, uh, site you're uh, choosing, what kind of site definition you're basing your web template on. So before we go into the next demo, first a bit about structuring Visual Studio solution. Uh, I think this is really important because I've seen it a number of times uh, that you don't have control of your dependencies between your solutions, especially if you're working with the uh, reference assemblies and stuff like that. And if you need to have some structure of this and, and make sure that you're, you're not creating circle dependencies between your WSPs or, or uh, other re reference assemblies, since uh, assume that you're going to replace one of the assemblies. When, once you retract it, it uh, might have you need, might need to retract other assemblies as well. So this is really important uh, when talking about the solution and product structure. So what we're going to talk about now is uh, creating a custom project that organizes the, 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 the structure within one project within the solution. And this is what we had in our team a big discussion about how to, <laughs> how to structure the solution. Because we're all used to having uh, different ways of doing it. And that, this is what happened in real life as well. You have uh, several, <laughs> Andrew's laughing down here. <laughs> well, especially if you have more chiefs than Indians, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought that we should have had this conversation about two months before we actually had it. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, uh, especially if you're working in a large product, you're outsourcing stuff uh, to, uh, to other continents and uh, you don't see them that often. You as an architect uh, and, uh, or uh, lead developer, you need to make sure that all your projects have the same structure, as I mentioned before. This makes it more easier for you to, to, uh, to review stuff. It makes it easier for people to come into the project and, and understand what you're trying to build and how you structured everything. So we're going to build, build I'm going to show you two ways how to create this kind of common uh, product structure. First, using the quick and dirty one, which is just building a structure, exporting it using an extension. And then we're going to show a more advanced VSIX project. The first here is the, the picture you can see is export template wizard. It's actually an extension uh, that Microsoft has made available in the Visual Studio extension gallery. You can download it, and it adds new functionality to Visual Studio. So you can just cr create an empty project, uh, cho choose the file menu, and export as template. So you just create your structure in there, and you get a kind of dirty uh, uh, template. It works, uh, but probably you want more control of it. So this is what we came up with, or I came up with. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and decided that everyone should use. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Made us. Yeah. And uh, hey, what the reason we're doing this? If you're starting creating a project, you're adding the spice directly to the product root. You get a long list of them. You, you don't don't know depending on how, how you name stuff. You don't know if it's a web part unless you, you check on the little icon. But many people use empty elements, and all the icons look the same. So you need some kind of structure to have control of it. So this we decided upon, creating a folder called SP, where we have all the spies, all the SharePoint related stuff, and one folder called code, where we put all, down all the code. Also depending on how you build, build your solution. Sometimes you put all the, the, the code stuff in a separate uh, assembly or old WSP and have an assembly free uh, WSP. But this is a good way to start. So we have all the spies here, the code here, and also, why not add an instructions document that describes the, the, the structure or the, gives information to, to the people creating product from this uh, uh, kind of uh, template. So I'm going to show you how to do this to uh, different uh, templates using Visual Studio, of course. And let's close down all this. 
I didn't prepare as good as Waldeck did. <laughs> Ooh. That's part of the tempo. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Die. The extra. So, then, uh, let's open up my project here. See, I'm connecting to TFS. Eventually, it will show up. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Uh, this is the one. So, once this one is loaded, let's close it down here. Let's shut down all these. Over here, we have, I created just a, a simple SharePoint project, uh, added an instructions file, uh, created the folder structure. And this is what I can use, just cre uh, created a, a blank empty SharePoint project and added this. And using the extension manager that's available up here, extension manager, I've downloaded this export template wizard. And this adds the, a new functionality to the file menu, as we saw. You can see here, call export template. So I can click on that one and choose if I want to export as a project template or item template, depending on what I selected. And then this will create the VSIX file for me. Uh, just next, next, finish, enter some stuff here, uh, add some icons to it, and click finish once I'm done. And this will create, in this case, a zip file. If I have the other option here, it's export uh, templates VSIX. This is more the advanced stuff. That instead creates the zip file is what something you just can download into to the fold structure. But this one actually creates the VSIX file. And uh, let me see, this is one. Click next, same here, next, finish. And we get the VSIX file instead. And VSX, VSIX files, is just double click them. Okay, now it's already installed. If it wasn't installed, I could just double click on it and it would, it would install my template. So, that's quick and dirty doing this, but we want to do it the right way, right? So, I started with creating a new project here. As I mentioned before, we need uh, the Visual Studio uh, SDK to do this. And created, uh, where are they? Up, 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 uh, extensibility. Up, up. And we have the VSIX project. So, I created one VSIX project, which actually is this v VSIX file, which uh, you a VSX, VS, VSIX file can contain several product items, spits, and product templates. So I have one of these first here. It's the one up here. It calls the VSIX manifest file. I added a couple of uh, 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 images and icons to it. But if we take a look at this file, we get this editor, uh, where I enter an ID, uh, product name, author, description, uh, Add the icons and stuff like that. Uh, select which editions should this uh, extension be available for. For instance, I might need uh, Ultimate or Premium to do this kind of extension because uh, the requirements are like that. Or other uh, uh, additional stuff uh, added. Uh, down here, I have content. And this is what I'm uh, going to show you now. To this VSX file, I'm going to add two things. First of all, a wizard and the project template. A wizard that uh, starts when I'm uh, creating this project, uh, so I can uh, retrieve information from the users uh, to perhaps manipulate the actual uh, project template created. So if we go to the Solution Explorer, I have created another VSX file, or the VS template project here, which is my actual project template. And this one has the VS template file. Here's one important thing. Uh, notice I named this one PT, not VS template. Keeping short names here, because have, this will create a folder structure for you uh, in the app data. And having long folder structures here so doesn't work with Windows. You know that. So keeping these file names short. Otherwise, you, you, you will be able to deploy it, but you will never see it in, when you create a new project. And this is, as usual, since we're SharePoint developers, we used to XML. Uh, there's a lot of XML in here. And uh, there's a couple of things to note here, uh, except from the, the, the name and title and stuff like that. Is uh, First of all, let's take a look at this one. 
there's two things you need to change uh, to get it to work. You want it to be deployed in, uh, uh, on the SharePoint and SharePoint 2010 uh, uh, grouping in, in the, when you create a new project. So I have to enter the output subpath here, which is SharePoint uh, slash SharePoint 14, with this, uh, which is the, the actual folder in, in uh, the create new uh, project dialog. Second, I added a wizard, wizard extension to this one. I'm going to show you this uh, library in a bit. It's an assembly and a class name to the wizard that's going to open when I create a project. Then I have the template content. And this is actually the, the things we're going to build. We need a properties folder with assembly info. We need a package folder with a package file, etc. Uh, this is how I build the code structure. Uh, uh, code folder, controls folder, time jobs folder. And then I have a project item in here, uh, which, I, which is constants.cs. And in this one, I have added the attribute replace paramet parameters to true. So if we take a look at that file, solution explorer, code, constants. Here I use the Visual Studio SDK replaceable parameters. So the save product dollar, save product name dollar sign, it will replace with my uh, full, uh, the, the, the namespace of the project. And I will also add it, the project name to this uh, constant here. And there's a lot of this built in uh, replaceable parameters you can use. And it's really important in SharePoint projects are the good ones. We have good one, two, three, four, I think. Um, up to 10. Up to 10, oh, yeah. yeah. So we have different GUIs we can add here. If we go back to the same file again, scroll down a bit. Still just building folders here. Uh, the assembly info as well. I added that with the replaceable parameters. Uh, and finally, in simple empty text file. So this is going to build up the structure for me. If we go to the wizard, on the other hand, when I create this product, I want to choose uh, if it's a farm solution or sandbox solution. I want to enter the uh, URL of the site I'm going to deploy it to. So I created a simple form here. Uh, first of all, a text box to ent for entering the URL, uh, radio buttons to choose which targets to deploy to, and then I have two uh, labels here with, with, which can uh, show me warnings uh, if I haven't, if I'm trying to run this on a machine which doesn't have SharePoint installed and so forth. And to create this kind of uh, wizards, you have to create a class deriving from the I wizard type here, and this has. A couple of um, uh, methods you need to override. The most important thing here is the product finish generated, where I set the properties uh, entered in the dialog into the SharePoint project through the, the Visual Studio SharePoint SDK to the, the actual project created. So I can see I set the site URL here and the sandbox solution here. And I synchronize it down to the project file actually being created. Then I have some other stuff in here as well. Uh, just checking if I, SharePoint is installed and uh, if I'm entering a correct URL, etc. So now I have, have three projects. I have my VSX, VSIX project, I have my uh, template project, and I have this wizard. So I have to go back to the, this VSX manifest and add this, these are the other two to this one using add content. And here I can add, choose different content types. So I add the template wizard, and I add the actual project template. Once that is done, I want to debug it. Visual Studio, when you have a Visual Studio SDK in, or Visual Studio in general, there actually you can have two different instances of Visual Studio, one normal and one with an experimental instance, that is called. So you can really try your uh, extensions without modifying your, your standard Visual Studio installation. So if you take a look at uh, this one, properties, here, build, oh, <coughs> debug. This one is, sorry, I screwed this up yesterday. Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna <Apple>. burn. <laughs> Root suffix. What I'm doing here is starting an external program, devm.exe, and passing the argument to use the experimental instance instead. So when I click F5 now, hopefully everything works, it's going to 
start a new insta instance of Visual Studio using this ex experimental instance instead, which has its own set of registry settings, registry keys, uh, and folder structure, and create new project here. <coughs> and here we have our ISC SharePoint project. So if I create that one, click OK, I get this nice dialog. Uh, I have to enter something in here, HTTP. <laughs> Like that, URL. Uh, this is um, only just validating it's a valid URL. You can, all, of course, add in fi uh, stuff that actually validates that it's SharePoint URL I'm entering. And click OK. It will create this new product for me using this structure. Like this. And you will see the code file here. It will be replaced the namespace and the project name here. Cool. So, it's really smart doing like this. Come on, guys. <laughs> As I mentioned, this is, the output of this is really important. So, if you want to deploy this to your developers, uh, you have to get the VSIX file, just ship, mail it to them. Uh, with, this is essentially a zip file with the VSIX extension. So, they just double click on it and it will be installed on their machines. And I mentioned earlier about the uh, folder path, which is really important as well. All these uh, will be installed into, let's open a new explorer, to the app data catalog of the currently logged on user. So we'll go into users, and this one it is, app data, local, Microsoft, uh, Visual Studio. Here you see the different uh, instances as well. This is experimental, and this is a normal one, into extensions, ISC, uh, this is one, no? Yeah, this is the one. So you can see it goes very long down. So you have a long, you, you will, if you do, double click on the VSIX file, you will get the warning that the, uh, the path name is too long. But if you uh, use the experimental instance and using FI debugging, you will not get that warning. And it will spend several hours thinking about why didn't my, my template show up. Um, and also, this is important. And I noticed that we had that problem when we first uh, started using this one, uh, that this name is really important. It's part of the, the path name. So if you have your de own developer machine, you just administrate your local. You don't have any domain there. Or you, so this, will, this did actually impact our solution. So we was just there in the border of having too long or too short name. So, but I think creating this kind of solution that ma makes it structured for you and your, your team uh, to uh, have control uh, of how all the projects are organized, uh, how the organization are within the actual product, uh, uh, the product file uh, and, and the, the solution makes it much more easy for reviewing code, finding code. All your developers know where they are, should add a web part, for instance. So, let's head back to some more slides. So, to summary it up, uh, you have to prepare your team. We're good on time here. We have one more demo after the summary. We're not finished yet. Uh, so, prepare your team with this. You need to make sure that they have the, the extensions you need. Prepare your, build your extensions or download them. There are a lot of extensions out there. CKS Dev is the best one. And, uh, we have Wes Herr here uh, responsible for it all. And uh, Wes, when can we have these? Uh, extensions in CKS Dev. Could you please uh, stand up so that everyone can see <laughs> if it takes too, too long? Well, we've got a scheduled release for two weeks from Wednesday. So that's two weekends. Yeah. We need to put it in and then test it. Okay, yeah. so in two weeks' time, a little more than two weeks' Skip time. testing and releasing next week. <laughs> 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 yes, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> so in about two weeks' time, we will have those templates available as a part of CKS Dev. So be sure that you're going to update. I go back here once more. You can install it right now. Uh, tools, extension manager. But you have to speak Swedish. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. It, download it's CKS Dev right now, and you get a lot of uh, new spies uh, and um, features to, to Visual Studio. And if you install it now, you will be notified using that there are updates. 
See, we haven't updated the latest one here. So you will get the updates once Wes has finished his job. No pressure. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you can really be more effective if you, if you make these kind of uh, templates and uh, this kind of structure within your, your project. And if you're really clever like Wes and Waldeck here, you might build your own stuff. You want to publish it so everyone else uses it. Uh, perhaps do that before you ask Wes to include it in CKS Dev. But you want it out on the Vision Studio Gallery. Uh, this was a demo we hoped had worked. Uh, we hope it works today. We haven't tested today. Well, we haven't tested today. So no? the Visual Studio Gallery, which is the place where you upload your VSIX, uh, let's say it's been challenging for us to, update, to upload our VSIX there since last Thursday. So we haven't tested it today. So it might just work. Uh. And Victor is going to show you how it works. On gallerymst and Microsoft.com, it wasn't. You can go to visualstudiogallery.com. Oh, wrong window. Uh, I bing it. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yes. So here, you, first of all, you can find all these extensions here. Uh, and a lot of SharePoint extensions in here, actually. Uh, you can upload your own. If I click on Upload, I have to log in using my live ID. Oh. You're back to English again. Oh, <laughs> oh someone. Let's skip that. <laughs> Let's skip that login. <laughs> <laughs> he gave up. It won't work anyways. <laughs> oh, there it works. <laughs> and now the password. <laughs> that, that's going to be fun. That's a challenging. There's a lot of special characters in there. Works in one. Yeah. So I have to choose with extension type. First of all, there's two problems here. If uh, Wallach tries to upload his template, he has to choose tool for some reason. But let's try upload mine here. Uh, see if it works. Where do I have that? Have it here. Just take this one. Copy it into here. Browse. Choose the VSX. Click next. Oh, there we got that error. Path name to belong too long. So they started actually checking this before you submit your stuff uh, if the path might be too long. Um, so we skipped this one. Uh, but if you get in here, you have to then choose a description, uh, categorization, keywords, and stuff like that. And then you can click Publish to publish it for everyone else to download your extension. And you will have, can get feedback on it. Uh, you can get ratings on it. And uh, so you get a little site for, for your extension. <laughs> but because we're so kind and gentle, we have uploaded all of this to SkyDrive, so you can download it now or during the break. And it's available now. Yeah. So uh, download these. And yes, <laughs> per performance, stress, load, whatever. It's all there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so download these and use them, and uh, eventually we'll see them in CQS Dev. Uh, that's all about the demos went well, actually. Yeah. yeah. And no questions so far. So we have, I think we have, we have one question over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the con yeah. You want more explanation of the concept of the experimental instance of Visual Studio? Yes. Uh, when I start Visual Studio here, it will load Visual Studio on all the settings that are in the, uh, from the registry. Uh, and the app data and the customizations you have done from the, no the normal inst uh, instance. But w when I use that uh, slash root suffix exp, it will start Visual Studio in a so-called experimental instance. It will, instead of uh, querying the, the normal registry, it has a specif specific uh, hive in the registry with experimental instance settings. So you can experiment with your different extensions or Visual Studio settings in there very easily, and you can flush this uh, experimental instance and reset back to normal 
if you've done something horribly wrong. For instance, uh, making a lot of settings. Or, so everything you do in tools options here will get stored in the experimental instance instead of in your normal Visual Studio. Which is great for when you're deb debugging this kind of wizards, for instance, uh, that both Waldock and I have built. Uh, so not uh, risking your normal development environment. Sorry, is that out of the box functionality? Yeah, that's out of the box. You don't need a Visual Studio SDK to do that. Uh, and you, I don't think you need to have, you can have as many um, uh, experimental instances as you want. It's the name uh, e uh, EXP as I entered in the, in the dialog. So that could be any tag? Yeah, because, let's close that one. Properties. Oh, it's still debugging. But EXP is just the name, and as you saw in the folder, I had that one here, right? Here, so I can enter anything else and get my own setup instance here. And this is the same in the registry. If that instance hasn't been created before, it will create that registry keys for you. So when you do the root suffix and give it a name, it'll create that? Yeah, it will create that folder for me, yeah. And VS uh, SDK, uh, also, it's the, just download it from uh, Microsoft.com uh, and make sure to match that SDK with the version of Visual Studio I have. I think I accidentally installed the non SP1 SDK on the, Sharp, on the Visual Studio SP1 and nothing worked. So make sure to do that. I think I did, did that wrong. It was late in the evening, so it might be something else. <laughs> Any more questions? So, by now we're all set to do the actual programming that starts after this session. Uh, and everyone in the team has used this structure. And we will use the same solution. We will keep on branching it uh, in TFS. So you will recognize from, from the start when they start building, the, adding the, the spies, uh, the code, that getting more and more of these spies into the same structure. So hopefully it will be really easy for you to follow what we're trying to achieve over the next couple of days. Not all solutions will be like. We have some specific stuff, especially we come to the cloud. Everything is a bit blurry there, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, foggy, foggy, foggy. Yeah. Chance of showers. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs>